All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for June 20th, 2023, 6 p.m. Good evening, council, audience members, and administrators. Ms. Berner, if you would call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. He's on his way. Lay. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Rodewald is absent. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to the invocation tonight will be done by Councilman Lindsay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the today. We thank, thank you for all the blessings you give us, Father. Father, we ask you to protect our firefighters, our first responders, our police officers, our military. Father, most of all, we ask you to guide this council and guide our administration to do what's best for the city. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, moving on, we'll need action on the council meeting for uh, 6 5 23. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion on those minutes? And when you're ready. All right, Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Minutes are accepted 5 0. All right, and moving on to Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. We'll have the city manager report. We'll start with the police report, and I'll give that for the uh, record. Uh, there are 333 uh, calls taken, 39 or report, 76 assi assist, uh, nine criminal arrests, zero felony arrest, eight misdemeanor arrest, uh, one warrant, uh, 86 traffic stops, 58 traffic warnings, 28 moving citations, 1,647 business checks, uh, six code enforcement follows up, and we thank you for those, and one traffic, ca uh, uh, traffic crash. Uh, Sergeant Lehman did put a note here. It says, all new deputies have completed their FTO training. Deputy Liming, Liming has returned to the regular uniform patrol patrol, and we appreciate him assisting while these duties completed their training. Uh, Deputy Lining had uh, come in contact with me multiple times with text messages about some concerns, so he did a fantastic job out here as well. Um, the rest are just stats. I'd be happy to entertain any questions before we move on to our fire report. Any questions? Mr. Bond. Do you know anything did the Dodge dealership get broken into again? I don't think they got broken into, but there was a theft. I think two cars were stolen from their lot. Mm. I heard that through the... Yeah, I think it was on Facebook, but it, they, were, they got away with some expensive vehicles. I think the total was $100,000. What did they get? Two trucks, a truck or two. I thought Harry was driving into it. <laughs> he was home. See what happens <laughs> when he's not paying attention. <laughs> so, if there are no more questions, I'd be happy to move on with the city manager. Please. Great. And moving on to the city manager's report, our fire chief, Chief Steve Preston. Council citizens, uh, for the month of May, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 84 EMS calls in the city, 13 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 10 fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had four EMS calls answered either by mutual aid by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 5-2 being on a response. We answered four mutual aid EMS calls for Pike Township and four for Bethel Clark. The graphics that you see are new. It's because of our software that we're using for our reporting system. So the, the graphics that you see for runs are really a little different. They do break it down though a little bit better to show you the different incidents that the uh, that we that we're going on. Council, anything for the chief? All right. I, Mr. Mom? Yes, sir. This is year to date. Is that right? What these pie charts are? No, that's month. That's for one month. That's sir. monthly. <laughs> okay. Right. Breaks it down and these break it down into a percentage. Good, Mr. Bond. Uh, great. Yep. Uh, sir, just a comment for you, Chief. Uh, as always, you and your department are doing a fantastic, awesome job. Thanks. And uh, into the city manager and the deputy and so is the sheriff's department. Okay. 
Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Thank you, Chief. We appreciate it as always, sir. And moving on to the city manager report, our finance report with our finance director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and members of the public. The finance report is for the month of May. We receded in $909,651.02 during May for a total year to date. $4,425,386.88. On the expenditures for May, we spent $561,888.44 for a year to date of $3,709,537.68. In our statement of cash, the beginning of the year, we started with $7,510,472.46. And currently, at the end of May, have seven million two hundred. Excuse me. Bless you. Fifteen thousand two hundred sixty-six dollars and twenty-four cents. All the bank reconciliations are done through May. On the report for the income tax collection, uh, May was a very large collection month. Um, that was for most of the April fifteenth deadline. And CCA collected on our behalf two hundred sixty-nine thousand. $682.42. And for comparison from last year, it's up 18% just for that month. But for the year, we are still above 7.24% on the income tax collections. It's going very well. Mayor's Court, the month of May, there were between fines and court costs and one other fee, they brought uh, six thousand two hundred and fifty nine dollars in on mayor's court for a year to date total of twenty four thousand five hundred and forty nine dollars and with our interest rate I just wanted to comment that um, we did move a little more money into star Ohio last month and right now our year to date income tax collection is almost sixty thousand dollars which is more at this point than our highest year which was in 2019. Uh -huh. so of course interest rates are still high and i think mr bridge is talking about our investment policy tonight and that's just the start ohio it's 5.2 percent at the end of the month that's my overall report if there's any questions i can entertain council move to accept the finance report second motion by Ms. eggleston second by mr lindsay for the report Good call. Yep. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That's accepted 6 0. Question. Yes. Ms. Harris, I have a question about the mayor's court. How close are we to recouping our startup expenses? We have um, passed the recoupment part and we are 12000 in the black. Okay, thank today. you. Anyone else? Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay for the mayor's court. Okay. And when you're ready. All right, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. It's accepted 6 0. All right, thank you. And thank you, Ms. Harris. We appreciate it. Thank you. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Ms. Harris. And moving along with the city manager report, our service report presented by Mr. Kiko, who is our director of public service slash assistant city manager. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start off tonight with our public works department. First round of dirt patching has been completed. However, if you still see any potholes that are out there or any areas that uh, uh, reappear, uh, for sure call the city or, or our street department or let any one of us at the city building know. Uh, the shelter house street light has been put up. It is kind of aiming in between the parking lot and the patio out here. That we're gonna, we're gonna see how it looks at night. And if it glows enough to cover everything, we'll leave it. If not, we're gonna try and twist it a little bit because the down line for the shelter house is on the um, east side of the pole. But it is up. Any questions, Mr. Cook? <laughs> 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 Any questions? When is it going to get done? <laughs> it's up. Uh, it's it's up. up. It's done. It's done? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's up there. No. Oh, it's right behind your car. I think it just fell. <laughs> <laughs> on, on your car. That's funny. That's good. I'm talking about the building. Oh, oh we can only hope. 
Um, so anyway, if we need to adjust a little bit, we will. Uh, we will be putting the light back on the pool over here. We decided to probably not move the one in Smith Park. It is not in the way of the new shelter. So we'll put that Cobra light back up on that pool that is uh, in its current location. Um, I'll skip the next bullet point for the very end. Um, uh, city crews will be replacing some non-compliant detectable warning strips. Those are the orange strips you see on a lot of ADA ramps. We're doing some of those in-house on Main Street to one, save some cost, and uh, two, it'll better help um, some of our crews understand the ADA process and what we might have to do in the future. Uh, let's see, water department, we have done 18 uh, private well uh, inspections so far, and uh, the communication has went well. We've had quite a few questions from residents as we visit them, and by the time we leave, uh, we're under a better understanding of why and why we're doing it. Um, I do know a few didn't realize some were on their property, some didn't realize, you know, it just it started well before a lot of people that currently own the homes. So, um, you know, some are looking to get just get rid of them. You know, they don't they don't want to, uh, want to keep them much longer. Uh, we have. Um, we're currently uh, doing some general repairs throughout the plant. Uh, we did replace three hydrants. We decided to keep a couple in stock right now instead of repairing a few. It, it, we're gonna get some other on order. It's taking so long to get hydrants that we don't wanna be empty, go ahead and replace two and not have one for an emergency. So we, are, we do have a couple for an emergency and we'll get a couple on order to uh, replace those other ones. Uh, there's really no update in the sewer department, you know, other than our uh, meeting is, uh, it's already been set for the wastewater plant study and we're still moving along. Falcon is to be resurfaced here within the next couple weeks with ADA ramps that connect there to Deerfield. And then um, we, all, we also will be on the 200 block of Scott Street, just basically doing a seven and a half foot wide mill cut where the trash trucks have uh, damaged that one block just outside where the cars park. You'll see some muddy areas and where it's humped up. We're just going to send their mill through, mill it out, and put some new asphalt in those areas on both sides of the 200 block. So we're going to add that into that Clark County resurfacing project. Main Street curb and ADA ramp project. It was awarded to A and B. That work will be completed in August. Shelley Company, who has the paving portion, they're trying to work it out with ODOT and A and B on when they may pave. It could happen before the festival. It may happen after the festival. We're just not real sure. If it happens after the festival, it's very possible that some of uh, the thermoplastic striping would wait till the spring of 24 to get put down because it just may be too cold for it. And uh, Fenwick Drive reconstruction phase two, Sturm was tentatively awarded low bidder. We are waiting for the county to do their financial solvency test on them. Once they pass that, then they'll get the award through the commissioner's office. Uh, Carlisle Park phase one project, we did go out today uh, looked at where we might put the new basketball court and uh, you know some of the possible sidewalks and that ADA swing. Um, prices are coming in over the current budget so I do have a call into the county to see what we might do to maybe have to uh, we keep doing it we'll just maybe push it off a little bit for a couple more months to save more or just see where the actual financial uh, final estimates come through. And uh, Nature Works grant, I'm still working on the specs because I will have to bid out that pole line or design a whole spec and everything to get it out for bid. And uh, it is not a proprietary enough project to be able to do a direct select. Moving back up to the street sweeping. So we had demoed the mechanical sweeper. Uh, we, we really liked it. Uh, very big machine. Um, and uh, you know, we really had no issues with it. Uh, and then a, about a week or so ago, we rented the Timco, which is the air sweeper, and called around. Uh, we really liked it as well. It is uh, smaller. It's, it's much more um, uh, driver friendly and uh, did a heck of a job on the cleanup. So in the meantime, we rented one from uh, Best Equipment, who we got a proposal. They brought in, which is two sizes bigger. It's a 600. Uh, our, uh, street lead Dave Coleman uh, started today with uh, the rental and uh, he has already completed the Edgebrook area and uh, a couple more streets you know throughout the city and we have a 20, 20 yard roll off dumpster near two thirds full already. So we're going to end up doing probably three dumpsters uh, with it. So now to the, the reason we demoed and the reason I put this uh, proposal in front of you. We had pricing from uh, uh, to have it contracted to be slightly over 9,000. As you guys know, you've seen what the contracting 
issues and what I've explained to you we've had with them with dust, not getting the debris, uh, it's taking way longer, the drivers aren't, you know, it, it's just a whole slew of issues. So we, one thing we will never do is probably contract again. Uh, rental just came to my, um, uh, in, it, uh, to light just a couple weeks ago when they told us they do rent their Tempco sweepers. So that's why we decided to rent. So instead of being about 9,000 and some change, plus our roll off dumpster, we still have to pay for that. We decided to rent. And on our rental was is about 7,000 plus per sweep is what we're kind of seeing right now. So prices will go up probably every year. Roll off dumpsters go up every year. And that includes, we, pay a, we are paying a $750 um, add on to our insurance. Now, if we decide to sweep again three, four times, that 750 doesn't come back again. So it's a $750 basically rental cost for liability uh, for us. So that, that brings us up to be about you know, 7,000 plus per sweep. And then what I put in front of you is the one we demoed that uh, you know, they come in at 232,000 for the machine. As you see on the next to the last page, there's some various, um, uh, pricing for municipal financing for that various years, you know, kind of what the cost will be. Uh, if you take the max years times that interest rate at seven years, you're going to pay about $272,000 total uh, for this sweeper. Uh, we anticipate what I think the city should be a minimum, bare minimum of two times a sweep or two times a year of sweeping, if not three citywide and some of your you know main drags keeping those things done so we have approximately it's called four and a half sweeps we'd like to do in a year um, if we did that you know and most everybody i've talked to from the various cities that own these machines the companies themselves you're, you're going to get 20 years out of the machine and that's with just general maintenance obviously this does not co cover maintenance you know you're going to have to replace your brooms you're going to have to keep oil changes going you're going to have to keep things clean most of these machines today are stainless steel. The hopper is stainless steel. The blower is stainless steel. Things don't deteriorate like uh, a lot of the old equipment, which were just straight up steel. Uh, so I kind of threw the total number that we would pay out at seven years of about two hundred seventy-two thousand, and divided by you know the twenty years, and that was thirteen thousand six hundred a year. So we're just in our one sweep. We're almost half of that. So uh, we're thinking with the new streets coming in and keeping up with the newer streets that we have, the weeds that we have growing, um, and then not having to spray as much, I think it would be a bonus you know, uh, to have our own sweeper and be able to do the things we wanna do at a moment's notice. You know, We get any kind of storm debris, we get, we get complaints, we do dura patching. We can sweep right after we dura patch and not do it based on trying to rent one, trying to contract one. So there's some ideas there, uh, but you know, I, I think uh, I certainly, you know, from a city standpoint, would really like to go with our own sweeper. Um, the details of the cost on, um, you know, years. Uh, just got this right before I uh, left last week. You know, on what financial terms? I I do plan on checking with a local vendor just to see if they can match it. Um, it's possible, um, but municipal leasing is always. Uh, usually cheaper than uh, just a government or a person going down to a financial institution and going and getting a regular loan. So I'll, enter, I'll entertain any questions on the report or the uh, sweeping information. Council? This is for a brand new? Yeah, brand new. And it would take about six to nine months to get. So it would be like the first time we would see it would be next spring. Once we buy it, each time we sweep, the cost will be minimal. Each time we sweep, if we buy one, there's really no cost but just that weekly checking on it. I mean, there's just this the maintenance. Because your employees are already on the clock. Yeah, our employees are already on the clock. And like Dave right now, he's he's operating it. You know, we're going to do it. Um, you know, certain streets we do. Like he'll be in a 5-8 in the morning, so I apologize if he wakes you up early, but he'll be coming through probably about 5-30 with the truck hitting Main Street. I don't think he Tomorrow? Can start that early because of the quiet hours starts at seven so we'll talk about that later about when he starts all right well then i'll call him later on but he'll he'll be there probably either right before seven or right around seven because we tomorrow. get some special circumstances tomorrow it'll be tomorrow probably
what do we do with the stuff that we picked up off the streets? Uh, it, it goes in a roll-off dumpster. So no matter what, we got to get some sort of uh, container uh, because it, one, it has some disposables of like potentials of oils, um, gravel, it has trash in it, cans, plastic, styrofoam. So we just can't put it like back here, like what we do with brush and clean fill. We have to dispose of it via a roll-off dumpster. I'd like to see it done more than four times a year. Another thing too is, and fantastic job on this, Howie. Um, since we're talking about our new trash contract coming up, we can maybe negotiate them doing a roll off when we do the street cleaning. So it's included in the trash contract. So therefore we don't have to pay for the dumpsters every time we do it. Yeah. And that was a perfect time to add it. Is the city of Carlisle gonna pay for it and then we're just getting it? What? Because that's a great deal. I saw, I saw on the front there. Oh, did, did you have a typo? <laughs> And that sounds great to me. Get it. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that happens. So you said this one is a bigger model than the one you originally was looking at? So, no, this one is the model we wanted uh, that we demoed. The one we are renting oh, it's bigger. is two sizes bigger. Okay, gotcha. Right. Okay, I misunderstood you. No, I, I like it. I, uh, you know, I have always thought you guys have been shorthanded as far as equipment that you guys need to do your job, like that back truck. I mean, I know it's an older one, but it was still a piece of equipment you guys needed. So I'm all for this as long as the bookkeeper thinks it's okay. She thinks I'm taking my question. So, are you okay with that? Financial? Yes, from what we talked about earlier. Yeah, and then he just got this information. Yeah. I mean, because at the end of the day, it's like you said. I mean, if we're going to continue to keep renting it, you might as well just buy it yourself. That's my thought. Mr. Lindsay? The, uh, oh, 278. Ms. Harris, Mrs. Harris, sorry. Uh, are you looking at the three, five, or seven year term on a loan? So, Howie and I need to sit down and go over the details because it's been a while since we talked about it. He just got this last Friday, and I haven't had a chance to review it today, to be honest. And the last one we did with council was the other sweepers pricing, and that was at three hundred thousand. So uh, this is yeah. cheaper. Mm -hmm. So if we went with three payments of eighty-three five hundred a year, can the budget sustain that currently or not? You want me to answer that for you? I can you give her? Sense. We'll give a. Yeah, we had a, there's a lot to look at in the budget. Okay. So what we can do is look at it, and then I'll send an email out. I don't know if yeah, uh, give us a chance to give a chance to look at it. We, so we want to. I want to look at all options. We have three different, um, actually six different funding options, um, and then Colleen can make the best decision. But give her some time to look at that. Okay. How this is going to work? Um, we'll how we will probably put an ordinance in front of you guys because it exceeds the monetary threshold for us to spend. Yeah. Yeah, vastly. So and that'll give Colleen some time to kind of look at everything. Okay. So you're planning on this being in, in next year's budget. I'm assuming, yeah. yeah, it would be because we would probably go with, I mean, the pricing difference between paying an upfront price within 30 days or one after um, is kind of minimal in the grand scheme, but that would be something I've talked with Colleen on going, okay, is our first payment going to be 30 days, which then means that would be this year's budget. If we do one year in arrears, that would be 24's budget. Okay. And then, too, on top of that, too, for discussion, let's if we sign up for this year, we have to start making payments on it, and we won't get it for six months? Oh, no, no, we don't make a first payment until, until it's done. It. So that okay, six months you. may already take us into gotcha. uh, 24 okay. anyway. 20. Oh, that's right. Okay. So you said spring of 24, we get it if we... It's going to be somewhere. They, they told me probably minimum six. Okay. That uh, doesn't mean he doesn't surprise us with going, hey, we got one off the lot trying to, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, one more question, if I may. Uh, Howie, on the Dura patching at the corner of Church in Washington, the road kind of comes down like this. There's always water standing to the left side as you're heading uh, east. Mm -hmm. There's a hole in there about this big. You can't see it for the water, but my tires find it almost every time I turn. Church in Washington or Church in Lincoln? Lincoln, I'm sorry. Lincoln. And where, the, where the number twos are? Is, is that what you're talking about, where it's real bad right there next yeah, to the curb? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like down there. Yeah, we, we have some major work to do there. We already dug out some of the dirt and put twos in there to keep it from getting worse. Okay. But yeah, it's it's a it's a bad thing. We got to completely rip that out and redo that. We, we dirt patch next to it a little bit. To just try to hold it together until we get these other things going and, and try to fix that whole corner. Any idea on a timeline? Probably sometime next year. 
No, it'd probably be later on this year. Like I said, sweeping for Dave is five solid days. We get 50 hours okay. for the sweep, so he's on it solid. And then we have some tree work for this. We just have some things that we got to get done within the next couple <coughs> weeks. Okay. Minimum, yeah. And that'll be done in house, correct? Mm -hmm. that, that corner? Okay. All right. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bond. Howie, do you know uh, what the annual cost of maintenance on this? piece of equipment is supposed to be what they estimate that at it's it's all based on hours I mean the oil changes are just like any of our other vehicles um, I don't have us like a specific number if it's gonna be a couple thousand a year on oil changes I do know what basically you could wear on your first time for the season like right now um, you'll wear a couple side rooms but they said basically you come with two rarely you you run the driver's side one on the yellow there's really no reason so you move it over and you'll probably get your your sweep done for the season or for the first time and then once you get into that routine of four or five or whatever in a year you're going through basically just a very light maintenance so you put the least amount of pressure on that broom and let the vacuum do most of the work it's just when we're doing like what we're doing now he's got the max pressure on the broom to pull up what gravel was in that gutter okay. um, and then do you know is the truck gas or diesel it is diesel and it has got the uh, tier two or tier four um, uh, def system uh, everything is uh, stainless for the exhaust from what i understand is is there an option of going with the gas mm -mm. They, it's an isuzu well isuzu does have gas models yeah they they are going with for us for idle time we would want diesel um, for that truck especially with an auxiliary motor it doesn't have an auxiliary it does okay the only reason why I bring that up, I have a lot of experience with Isuzu's. I've owned yep. probably four, maybe five. And the diesels are more problematic down the road, especially with all the depth system. As the truck ages, what diesel, it becomes a nightmare. What diesel are they running in your Isuzu's? Five two Isuzu's. Oh, we're, we're running, it's the Kubota. For the pony motor? Uh, for both. So they, they run the Kubota yep. for the... I'll double check on chassis, but I'm pretty sure it's Kubota for both when we had the chassis up. Okay. Double we, check, because I don't think, I'd be shocked if it was. Yeah. That, that might be good. I just know the uh, Isuzu side, once you get uh, a certain age, a certain amount of miles, it becomes a nightmare as far as the maintenance goes, and it gets very expensive. Sure. On that side of it. I'll, I'll double I'll double check on it. miles than we're going to put on or anything, if there was a gas option, I think long term, it would be something that we probably The only other thing is when we rent, are we renting, is it by the day or by the hour? How are these rentals? So the, the rental is minimum one week, which is 40 hours. Uh, and just the rental is $5,200. Um, he, and I said, but it's probably gonna take us 50 hours. He goes, well, it, we're trying to, we're looking at buying one. So he threw in the They're 50, good. you know. So he, th he gave us 50 hours, it's a week minimum. A month uh, was, uh, it is cheaper, like anything else. Rentals get cheaper by the, the longer time you need them. But a week is all you know. We really would need it for. Okay. All right. I was just curious if you know, how they did that. If it was five or whatever. Thank yeah. you. Right. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Kicker, I just had a couple other questions off of that subject. Um, hydrants. Did you was one of the hydrants replaced up on Main and? Um, Right next to the Abe's, I saw a trash can or a bag of that. Was that one replaced? I got I got to ask Bob what's going on with that one. We replaced the one across the street at CVS. Oh, okay. I don't know what's going on with that one. I do know we ha there might have been a valve issue that we found out during the last festival. Right. That um, the barrel might leak on it, but I, I don't know. I got to find out why it's a bag because I didn't see a bag when I left last Thursday or okay. Wednesday. Um, then light poles. Did we did we ever get any extra light poles in stock? Because I know we seem to go through them pretty. Quick. Yeah, we we always keep two in stock. Uh, we already obviously had to put the one up there, so we have one in stock and waiting on one to be coming back into stock. Okay. But we always try to keep two. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, back to you, Mr. Bridge. Randy, what do you think of the Kubota engine? I think it's great. I know everything about engines. <laughs> I'm a master engineer. <laughs> what type of motor yeah, is on a Craftsman push mower? I don't know anything about motors. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. The push mower itself propelled and human power don't have an engine. Yeah, so I didn't get it. 
All right, so moving on to the city manager report under informational items, dis discussion topics. It is a kind of light week, and then we had some things to go through. So uh, planning board meeting is set for June 27th. Uh, that's at the fire station. So the topic is a zone change, and that's for portions of 336 Ohio. So um, some way, shape, or form, back in the day, when the city was assigning zoning, 336 Ohio is the old Port of John site back there um, behind Carlisle Plastics. Um, part of it is zoned residential to the other half is zoned light industrial. So we're clearly making it all light industrial. Um, it does not need to be residential. And then we're also changing these zones for the Madison Street School, Habitat, and Clark County land bank builds. So how that works is the planning board has to go through quite a few meetings and then they make the recommendation to you guys and you guys have a hearing on it. Then it's six for 30 or 60 days and then it becomes a FET. So it is a timely process, but it is there for, for a reason. Um, so um, we're also supposed to meet about vacating a portion of Mill Road. Uh, but I was on the phone today with Clark County Tax Map, and somewhere between 1938 and 1935, um, the city, I mean, the, the county got notification of that road being dedicated, but they don't have any legislation from New Carlisle saying this is ours. So I'm not sure if I can even locate legislation from back in the day, so I'm still kind of figuring some things out. So push comes to shove. Um, we may not need to actually vote on that vacation of the Mel Road because it might not be our responsibility. So um, we'll have some more information on that uh, as the information comes to me. Uh, but we, again, we still will be meeting for the zone change. Um, story walk along the Malta use trail. So um, this, the story walk um, has been a very popular item for us, to be honest with you. We do get a lot of compliments on it. Um, we've had some issues in the past where it's been vandalized, but it has been taken care of in a timely manner once we informed the library it was done. Um, they are wanting to do another set, as we originally discussed when we put this one in. And this one will be coming from Lake uh, and meeting it down by the shelter house. So we have the one that starts about the shelter house now that ends here. And this one will start at Lake and come down this way. So ultimately, we would, we, we would need council's approval on that because it is permanently installing something on the land that the city owns. So we need to know your guys' opinion on that. So they're paying for them? Yeah, they pay for them. We'll help install like we did last time. Right. But they are, I mean, we've had a talk with them about maintaining and it's for, the overall program has been very successful. I mean, how, how nice they kept them versus how many times they've actually been vandalized and then turn around time and getting it done. So one of the things before, the plastic they were using was very weak. So uh, the library had bought new thicker plastic and that seems to be holding up greatly. Actually, I was with her when we uh, actually installed it all. I took her out on the gator and helped her install it all. So that seems to be working out. And if I am misspeaking, Howie, because you know more about that bike stuff than I do because you guys maintain it, please interject. Um, but it has been pretty much well maintained since then. So we do need to know if council is interested in moving forward with another set. And that was something we discussed in the first round, um, possibly doing another set. I say yeah. I do too. Yeah, I have no problem with it. Okay. All right, well, we'll move on. Great. Any other, Mr. Lindsay? Oh, I'm good. Right? Okay. Okay. You good? He don't know what you said. Okay. <laughs> Um, hometown Hanner military program. This is another program that we started that is getting a lot of, we get a lot of compliments from it. And I tell you this, how the street guy and Howie's department did our main street with the flags and the banners, it looked wonderful. And I personally did get phone calls about that. Um, so this is a little, little PSA because we're on live, uh, we'll be going to YouTube. Um, we will be ordering our next uh, print session soon. We usually wait till we get around seven or eight so we can get a better deal on the printing. Um, we did attach the policy and application to this uh, report. So if you do happen to download this from the website, they already have the application there. Uh, but we do encourage people to get in. Um, so uh, the total cost of that is $55. We print three banners. We give one banner to the applicant so they can have it at their house. And then we keep two. We put one up and then we keep one for a backup. Uh, but again, that is a very successful and popular program. Clark County Health Stats, they are attached. Uh, so council should review those at their leisure. And a busy weekend coming up. We have community garage sale. We have fireworks show at Haddock's Field. And I want to say thank you to all the volunteer and paid workers. Um, this week I'll have a final phone call with uh, Vice Mayor Del Grimm to find out exactly what we need so we're all on the same page. Um, I will be out of the office on Friday attending a funeral. Um, so we'll just have to um, have it all uh, set up for them prior to that. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Mr. Grimm. If we don't own Mill Road, who does? Good question. That's why I asked it. Still trying to figure that out. I'm talking to Mr. Kitko. I assumed we maintained it. 
I assume that we paved it. I assume that we cleared the snow off of it. Apparently we stopped at the stop sign. So there was a house back there in the, back in the day. There was a farm house back there. The only thing I can think of that was our driveway. And some way, shape or form through 1928, 1935, it was as such. And then after that, I have no idea. Well, there's still a house on, on Mill Road. Yes, sir. This is at the other end. When you first, first pulling off 235, that house right there? Yeah. Yeah, that one's not in question. It's, you go down to that stop sign, and then you have to turn on Brubaker. It actually goes straight. Uh, Hensley's owned that brown tan building there. So I don't know even when that was constructed. So the, this vacation that you're talking about is from Brubaker to the woods? Yes. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. Yep. Good. We don't use it anyway. And what the reason why we're entertaining vacating it because we have to put the entrance to uh, the resource at Honey Creek off of Brubaker Drive. So we needed some of that land. So the Hensleys were gracious enough to donate that if we exchanged, let them have Mill Road. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Go. No, go ahead. Anyone else for Mr. Cook? I got a couple, three things. Over the weekend, I got a couple of calls about the uh, RV vehicle sitting on the Zimmerman. Uh, do we have an ordinance? Sure, we have an ordinance. Where's the RV sitting? It was sitting there, nothing attached to it. How long was it there? Because you can load and it unload. Was there for three days. You can load and unload for up to like 24 or 48 hours. Okay, so Zimmerman, there's a trailer on the street. We'll get right on that. Okay. <laughs> okay, on that one, the other one, I'll wait till after the, uh, we talk about the uh, trailer. Okay. You know what address it was about what we're about on Zimmerman? Well, the only thing I just wondered what our timeline was to get it out for bid and uh, get the bids in. He's talking about what the trailer's at on Zimmerman. The trailer or the uh, God. Langdale, sir. Langdale, Zimmerman uh, area. Would be three, about 320, 325. But I'll look again. It was there this morning. Now it may be gone. Okay. Yeah, we'll take. I'll take a look at it. No problem. I just had one for you on the similar subject, Mr. Bridge. Um, the old Bell Manor lot that's out on Main Street. I know that you know we've gotten um, Rite Aid has done some work on their property, which looks you know much better now. You know what I'm talking about? The the parking lot for the old Bell Manor on Main Street, right next to. Yeah. I just didn't know if you guys had been in contact with him. Their weeds are growing like over the sign and everything. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. And Rite Aid has not complained at all. Oh, they? No, Rite Aid hasn't done anything. They put some mulch in that little area on the corner there, but the rest of their yard is, they have not complained. Oh, okay. CBS, on the other hand. CBS did. I went in one day last week, I'm sorry, the week before, and then within seven days they had it mulched, weeded, and it looks great. You know, so okay. Rite, Aid is, Rite Aid is a battle. Okay. All righty. But, uh, so this is the Bell Manor parking lot? Yeah, the one that's on Main, next to Bell Manor. It's really getting overgrown. So that's okay. All, that's so do you guys want to look at your exterior property maintenance code? Because not, 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 we had talked about the trash cans, and I had talked about you guys want to take a look at your exterior property maintenance code. Do you still want to do that? What, does it go through it? Yeah, to go through it. Are you wanting to go through it as a group, or you, what are you talking about? Well, I mean, you guys were policy, so one of the things we talked about the trash cans was if we're not going to enforce trash cans, we need to take a look at that exterior property maintenance code as from the top to bottom to make it more streamlined. That would cover your RVs, where they can be parked. I mean, that's, <coughs> we can't just take and choose what we want to enforce out of the exterior property maintenance code, if I'm getting that. So we really need to go through it and streamline it, because a lot of these codes are very antiquated. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're from the 80s. Or earlier. Now that's not going to take care of the weeds. Weeds are always an issue, but it may be talking about like your tra your your trailer placement. You know, 
instead of six inches, do you go to eight <coughs> inches on your weed? Six inches is kind of low. Mm -hmm. So that's when you want to look at your exterior property maintenance. It's okay. been a quite a quite a long time since I think council has kind of looked at any in-depth policy measure like that. Well, what do you guys want to do? You want to have a side meeting on that? What I can do is attach it to the, maybe the next meeting so you guys can have it like I did the trash contract and that way you can start reviewing it and then we can, it doesn't have to be done in the next month. It's something right. we can do eventually, so, but you guys should probably take a look at it to make sure we're all on the same page with that. Yeah, sure, attach it. Okay. All right, uh, we'll go with Mr. Bong. I just, I wasn't able to attend the community trash cleanup. I just was curious how that went. Very low turnout. Oh, it was super low turnout. We only filled the C and D down, uh, dumpster uh, maybe twenty five percent. Yeah, uh, and both the other ones maybe thirty percent. Yeah, uh, tires were probably the biggest thing. It was very very slow. We didn't have the big line at the beginning. We had like maybe twenty cars at first, and then after that it was one, two, or three, and that was about it. Yeah, it was very very slow. And I heard last year was very very well attended. Mm -hmm. I wonder if have anything to do with our push on code enforcement to clean up some properties and they don't have anything to get rid of. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, Thank maybe, you for that. That's what, exactly what I wanted to hear. <laughs> maybe, maybe the No, that's surprising. It's usually got a lot more oh, yeah. clarity to it. So, Ms. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Next Angel. year, for the community cleanup, we could put like yard signs on Main Street. What people know? More people know about it. Well, your thing too, I'm sorry. We'd have to do it in private property because we can't put it in there right away. But that's, you know, easy. Um, it was promoted well, right? I mean, it was out there well enough in advance. I, mm -hmm. Maybe it's just to the point where people are actually starting to clean up their yards. I think that's partially what you it know? is. I mean, because we have, as a, as a city, we have past couple years that a real big kick on cleaning up with the code enforcement guys and then with mayor's court and some people uh -huh. i mean they watch for that like clockwork because they know they're yeah. gonna have big stuff to get rid of yeah yeah some people can't remember what the big stuff was until it's too late mm -hmm. do you think it would help if we had it after community garage sale opposed to before that might help because then people that had all the stuff the garage sale that right. didn't sell they didn't have a place to get rid of it i think that would be that would probably be more beneficial to the citizens yeah, I mean, we can sit here and talk about all these different variables that make it highly attended or not highly attended, you know, but I, I don't I don't think it's one that hasn't been busy. Last year was yeah. a late uh, advertisement for it. That this year was early advertised almost two months ahead. So I'm wondering if it got forgotten about. It could be. And it was promoted multiple times on yeah. pages. Because we did the shredding event. Remember that? Mm -hmm. The shredding event a couple years ago. We advertised out of it. We had like two people show up. Three? Yeah, it was very few. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So. The important thing is we offer a service for our citizens. That's that's the important thing. And, go ahead, sir. Uh, on the city page, it still has our council meeting for July still listed as the Okay. Meeting. I didn't think about that. Thank you for that, that, for sure. Please. Mm -hmm. The, uh, Mr. Mayor. Sir. The uh, shredding event, that's been happening for... A few years now, haven't it? Like three or four? We haven't had it. We haven't had another one since the last one. We haven't. Because like I said, when I tell you literally, I think it was just two people. Literally yeah. two people. Two, maybe four at the most. Yeah, it wasn't well, a lot. It wasn't it a lot. It was not enough to pay us to have the man up. Mm -hmm. Well, if, they're, if they're, most people have a shredder at home, you know, I know I have one. In fact, I've got two or three a month. But anyways, yeah. I keep a shredder dump it out in the trash area. True. The bag gets full. Yep. Okay. Maybe something you want to look at to maybe discontinue but it's not going to be used. No, we haven't done it since. We we, we haven't. We haven't okay. had another one since. But yeah, I think you're right. I think it's like swimming pools nowadays. You can go to Walmart and get one for your house for very cheap. I got a shredder in my house. I don't ever use it, but it's there. <laughs> you know. All right, good. Thank you. You have to plug it in before you can use it. Right. Anything That's else? Yeah. Anything else for Mr. Britt, Mr. Vice Mayor? Totally different subject. Who's responsible for trimming trees that hang down on the street? Uh, it depends on where the tree's at. It could be on our property, then it's us, but normally it's a homeowner. We usually go through once or twice a year to do trimming 15 feet, 13 to 15 feet from curb up or center line up. 
and over sidewalks is I think seven or eight feet. We'll usually get that. Everything else is all uh, homeowner. Does that fall under the uh, property maintenance? Uh, I don't know if it's there or not. It's somewhere. It's probably somewhere in the code. I'm not exactly sure. Is there an area of concern you want us to go look at? A few. I can get you there. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll call you anyway about the fireworks, so we can yeah. go out to lunch or something. All right. Okay. I'm done. All right. Anyone else? All right, Mr. Bridge. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, everyone. Howie, fantastic report on that uh, street sweeper, man. I uh, appreciate that, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, it's all a it's all, all city manager report. All right. Uh, moving on to comments from members of the public. Anything tonight, ladies? Chief, you might want to check on him. I'm just joking. Check on him. The kid crying. Oh, I think that's happy cry. <laughs> so, all right. Moving on. Resolutions done. Ordinances. Miss Burner, if you would please. Yes, our first ordinance, uh, this was introduced on May 15th, public hearing in action on July 17th. I don't think you can start it, of course. Creating the money tax increment finance incentive districts, declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation, re requiring the owners of those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments, requiring the distribution of a portion of those service payments to the Tecumseh Local School District and the Springfield Clark Career Technology Center, and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. Moving on, Ordinance 2023-39 introduced on June 5th, public hearing in action tonight. And ordinance amending Ordinance 2023-12 for the purpose of correcting a Scriveneer's error. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. And an explanation of this ordinance. So this does not change any rate of pay. When I drafted this ordinance, I had put a wrong number in when it computed the 3.2%. The 3.2% is correct. The amount of raise is correct, 2,720. Uh, where I made a mistake was as I added her current, uh, her raise to a different amount. So that's why we have the 87,200 scratched out and now it says 87,720. Again, it's not increased pay, it's just fixing the error. Council, any discussion or questions? Sounds good. When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That's accepted 6-0. <clears throat> Ordinance 2023-41, introduction tonight, public hearing and action mm -hmm. on July 5th, 23. And ordinance amending ordinance 2020. 3-12 for the purpose of correcting a Scrivener's error in ordinance. Yes, am not, I not reading? Am I reading the wrong thing? No, no you're reading the right. This thing. is the second time I've done this. This is my bad. Scroll okay. down. Just read the second sentence. <coughs> okay. Right there. There's an ordinance second. adopting the yep. tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2024, and submitting the same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. So moved. No. Second. First, Lindsay, next, second, next Eggleston. Not till next time. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, Check that. Yeah. It's just read only. Yeah. Ms. Red, I thought it said 6-5. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I knew that, too, when I first read it. Okay, would you like me to read other business? Uh, no, um, I have something we need to go over with. I had, uh, had come across uh, something I wanted to discuss in an executive session, so I called over the weekend, and, I, and it was before, or it was after Mr. Bridge had sent out the... Um, the agenda. So I'd, I'd called Mr. Bridge earlier today and kind of made him aware of what I wanted to do, and he had no problems with it uh, to discuss. I'd like to break rules of council to go into executive session to discuss the employment of a, of a um, city employee. Public employee. Public employee. Thank you. So moved. Second. So a motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston to break rules. Okay. Break what? Break rules of council. Oh. <laughs> Break computers. <laughs> would not show what you was breaking. <laughs> Okie dokie. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That's accepted six zero. Right, then I need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Bond. Okay. 
been long. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Ca Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. That's accepted 6 0. All right. And we'll go into executive session. 6 30 51. 6 51. Mr. Lindsay. Move to uh, go back into a regular session. Second. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay. Not quick enough, Biggie. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. That's accepted 6 0. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Move to excuse uh, Mr. Roval. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by the three amigos. Miss <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eggleston. All right. <laughs> that was a dead even tie. Well, Miss Eggleston, we'll give it to her. Okay. Close Councilman choice. Cook. Yes. Councilman yes. Lindsay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That's also accepted 6 0. All right. And then. Uh, hold on. I lost. You want me to do it? I, I got it. I got so, it. I'm good. Yep. Community garage sale Saturday, June 24th and Sunday, June 25th. This is citywide. The fireworks show will be Saturday, June 24th, Haddock's Field. The show starts shortly after dark. Um, the trash recycling contract review and the downtown turn lanes will be discussed at the meeting on July 5th, 2023, 6 p.m. here at the Shelter House and any other items open for discussion. Right. Anything else, Council? I need to adjourn. A motion, okay. motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay to adjourn. Okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Accepted 6-0.